These herds move quite significantly throughout the delta. They tend to splinter off and rejoin and at times can form huge herds of up to 1,000, 1,500 animals. As always, we saw several yellow-billed oxpeckers with this herd. There were a lot of juveniles with this flock and they lack the distinctive red and yellow bill of the adults. These birds form a very symbiotic relationship with the large herbivores in the area. They comb through the hides of these animals, picking off ticks and ectoparasites. They thus perform a very useful function. These buffalo didn't seem to enjoy their presence today and these birds were clearly irritating them. At one stage, one of the old bulls looked up at us and pulled his top lip up as he scented us. This action is known as flemin and it serves to draw scent into the Jacobson's organ located in the, in the upper palate. The herd continued to move slowly off into thicker bush and we set off hopefully to find the lions that, that we had suspected would be following this buffalo but it wasn't the case this morning. The rainy season hasn't really started, but we have had some showers, and as a result, some of the depressions here in the meadow have started to fill up with water. They're already attracting enormous numbers of flying insects. We're getting all kinds of different species here, different colors, shapes and sizes. Quite fantastic. Dragonflies, damselflies, butterflies, and all manner of other little creatures around the vegetation and in the water. Here, a pair mating. This pair cruise around and eventually settle on some vegetation close to the water's surface. And the female's abdomen goes down there under the surface of the water, laying eggs onto the vegetation. A delicate action as she's placing eggs one after another, very different from the dragonfly style. When we see this very close up, the water is actually bending as she's pushing her abdomen down through the surface, laying those eggs one after another. And of course, these insects could be taking a great risk here. If we don't have rain for the next few days, the water level in these shallow pools will go down quite rapidly under the very hot sun, and uh, they could quite easily dry out. The amount of life that there is here is just coming and going so fast. An absolute delight to spend a morning here watching all this life around the pool. Within minutes of arriving at the pan, we saw our first bird life, a fish eagle. A 
and uh, not much further a pie kingfisher on the bank. As we worked our way around the pan, we came across this grey heron. As we moved on further into the pan, uh, we saw that it was almost a, a ritual um, on the banks that, that the animals would sun themselves in the morning and uh, build up energy and prepare themselves for the rest of the day. And as we came around this bend, uh, we saw these lines of crocodile doing just that. As the day moved on, we saw more and more crocodile swimming in the water. And there were some white-faced ducks on the bank of the Nyamiti Pan, and they looked a little bit hesitant, um, the crocodile just gliding past them. And what I was told about the Induma Reserve, uh, especially the Nyamiti Pan, is the large amount of hippopotamus that resides here. The larger or, or dominant hippopotamus uh, submerges itself and uh, the rest would, would follow. and eventually just ripples would be left above them. A beautiful sight, lovely blue water, fish of all sorts of colours. And this is typical of a sediment-free rock environment. This is the typical zebra feeding on the rock structure of this reef. This is Serenochromus, a female of one of the bigger types of cichlids that you get in Lake Malawi. And this fish we thought was behaving quite strangely and it looked like it had something in its mouth its gill plates puffed out. And while we sat next to this fish for a while, it became obvious that she was actually holding her young in her mouth. Just gently pulsating water through her mouth and out her gills, feeding her tiny fry, which were hiding inside her mouth with fresh water. There you see she puffs a few out of her mouth. And mouth brooding is one thing that sets cichlids apart from other types of fish. They are unique in the fact that they protect their young. She was very wary of the other predatory cichlids that were lurking around. Eventually we had to leave this female, the air had run out and we would probably see her another day. <laughs> 